Hi everybody, it's Adam with heartvalvesurgery.com. We're coming to you live from Abu Dhabi at the Heart Valve Society Conference. I'm here with Dr. Marty Leone, who is the Professor of Medicine at Columbia University Medical Center in New York. Dr. Leone, thanks for being with us today. Thank you, Adam, pleasure to be here. Yeah, and one of, special, one doc, one of Dr. Leone's specialties is transcatheter aortic valve replacement, TAVR. And Dr. Leone, maybe before we get to the question, a great question from Ed Hule, what attracted you to TAVR? Why did you get so involved in this, this new transformational device? Well, in the 1990s, we became aware that many of the elderly patients were not good candidates for surgery. And patients with aortic stenosis that do not have surgery as an option have a very dire prognosis. So we came up with the idea of combining a stent, which is something we're very familiar with in interventional cardiology, with a biologic heart valve. We decided that balloon expansion was an interesting way to be able to implant it because we use balloon expandable stents in the coronaries and in other vessels, and we thought this could be an option. So Dr. Alain Cribier, who's a close friend and colleague, did the first case in a patient in 2002, and we've been off and running. There have been over 700,000 patients who have received transcatheter aortic valves so far. Well, and if I understand this right, transcatheter tavers are now, oh, uh, uh, there's more tavers being done than surgical isolated AVRs, is that? True. Yeah, is that right? Yeah, by a significant margin. In the U.S., almost twice as many TAVRs versus surgery for isolated aortic stenosis. Yes. Wow. Well, thank you for taking on um, this and developing this technology with, I'm sure, team on top of team over the yes. years. And it really is fantastic what you've accomplished. So thank you. And speaking of TAVR, we got a question from Ed, as I mentioned. He emails us, um, what are the options for a patient that has received a biological heart valve is in otherwise good health, the valve is reaching its natural end of life, is TAVR or some, some other method an option for replacing an end of life surgically placed biological valve? That is a great question because the majority of surgically placed aortic valves are so-called bioprosthetic valves and they're not permanent valves. It's not one valve for your entire lifetime unless you're, you're elderly uh, and it's placed more towards the end of your life. So in younger patients, they're faced with a difficult um, decision um, when these valves fail, because they will fail. They can fail as early as five years, but more predictably between 10 and 15 years after implantation. And when they fail, they fail with narrowing or leakiness, but there's no medical treatment to manage these. So the only way to treat this is by secondary replacement of the aortic valve. Now this can be done surgically by removing the original valve and putting a new valve in, but whenever you do redo surgery, it is a riskier procedure. It's not quite the same procedure. Or this can be done with what we now call a TAVR valve and valve, hmm. where you can literally put inside the surgical valve a transcatheter aortic valve, and that seems to, um, now with many of the studies that we've done, prolong the life of the originally failed bioprosthetic valve. So th the good news is that that procedure's been done now in tens of thousands of patients. The acute results have been excellent. The complication rates have been very low. What we don't know as to what the durability will be of the new valve inside of the old valve. We have follow-up up to five years, which looks to be pretty good, but we'll need to see what happens in the next five years. But in someone like yourself, this would certainly be an option to consider. In fact, at the ACC meetings coming up, there's gonna be a late-breaking clinical trial on looking specifically of valve in valve um, in a group of patients who are low risk, like yourself, healthy otherwise, treating failed surgical valves. So there'll be new information that will you know, help to give us insights as to how to advise patients. Wow. Well, Ed, I, I hope that helped you. And I hope you continue your investigation into your next therapy, should you need one here shortly. And Dr. Leon, thanks again for everything you are doing. I look forward to uh, reading that new research that's coming out. As we, al as we always say here, keep on ticking.